Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to download and install the GIMP patch called Photo GIMP. So this is a patch designed to help people switching from Photoshop to GIMP and it makes it easier to switch from Photoshop to GIMP by using certain things like shortcuts from Photoshop etc. We'll get into that in a second. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.20 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. I have tons of video tutorials on here, my GIMP book of layers, and help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com, and you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So this tutorial is going to be covering how to download and install the Photo GIMP patch for Windows in particular. So this does work for Linux and Mac as well. I'll be doing a separate tutorial on how to install this for Mac. But the first thing you'll need to do is navigate to to this link, which I'll include in the description of the video. This is on GitHub, and Deal Linux is the one who came up with this. I'll scroll down, you can see all the files that come with this, as well as the splash screen. So this will replace your existing GIMP splash screen, and you can see the features that come with this. So it mimics Photoshop's tool organization. It has a bunch of free fonts, which by the way, a lot of the fonts don't include a commercial license. So if you wanna use some of these free fonts that are included with this patch for commercial purposes, definitely check the license of each individual font before you use them. You'll see it also comes with some Python filters, including heel selection, which is the filter that comes by default with resynthesizer. So that allows you to easily erase objects in photos in GIMP, which I have a tutorial on. New splash screen, as I mentioned. It declutters the canvas, which I'll show you. And I think the biggest thing here is that it replaces the GIMP shortcuts with Adobe Photoshop shortcuts. So all the shortcuts you're used to as a Photoshop user will now be installed in GIMP instead of having GIMP shortcuts. And the last thing to mention is that you'll have a new desktop icon. So let me minimize this. Right click, view, show desktop icons. So this is the default GIMP icon. We're gonna keep an eye on that as we install this. So coming back here to the GitHub page, I'll scroll up and I'm gonna click clone to download this and then come down here and click download zip. This is gonna ask me where I wanna download my zip file. For some of you, it might automatically start the download. So I'll choose my downloads folder and click save. I've already downloaded this once. Once it's done downloading, click on this little arrow and click show in folder. So here is the downloads folder where this file is located. What you're gonna to wanna to do is extract the files. So right click on here and go to extract all. So it's gonna ask you where you wanna extract this. I could go with this location, for example, or you guys can browse and choose any location on your computer. I'm gonna exit out of this because I've already extracted this. So here is my extracted folder. This is what should pop up once you're done extracting this. Next, we're gonna navigate inside this folder by double clicking on it. And you'll see a variety of things in here. I'm gonna click on the var folder, so double click on that to enter it. We'll go into the app folder, org.gimp.gimp, the config folder, and then the GIMP folder. So that'll leave us with this 2.10 folder. We're going to need that for the next step, but we're gonna stop right here. Next, what we need to do is find the main 2.10 folder in our GIMP download. So to do that, we're going to open up the current version of GIMP we have downloaded. I hope you guys have GIMP 2.10.20. So let me minimize everything on my computer and just double click on the shortcut. Here is my current installation of GIMP and I have all my preferences from my other tutorials I've done. But what I need to do is go to Edit, Preferences, and come down here to Folders and scroll down. You can click on pretty much any one of these folders. So I'll just go with my Brushes folder and just click on the folder that says App Data Roaming GIMP 2.10 and then whatever folder you're in right now. And then come up here, you'll see a little icon that says Show File Location in the File Manager. So we'll click on that. So here we are, here is the Brushes folder. What we actually need is this 2.10 folder. So let's come over here to this GIMP folder here. And now you can see 2.10, and this is the folder we're gonna be working with. 
But the next step is we want to back this folder up because this folder contains a lot of important information about our GIMP. For example, it contains a lot of the default preferences that come with GIMP when you first download it from the GIMP website. It may also contain things like plugins you've installed over the years or over the months and some of your personal preferences. So I do recommend backing this folder up. So we'll do that by coming over here and going to File, Open New Window. And what we're doing right now is simply creating a backup folder. So I'm here inside of my D drive. All I did was click on the D drive here. I'll come up top and click New Folder. And I'll just name this GIMP 210 Backup. Hit the Enter key. Double click to enter that folder. And now we'll come back here. And remember, this is our original 2.10 folder. So I'll right click, go to Copy, come over here, right click and go to paste. You can also just do control C and then control V to paste. So now we have all of our GIMP information backed up here in case we want it back later. So I'll minimize that for now. So remember this is our original GIMP folder that we accessed via the brush folders here. So what I'll do first is exit out of GIMP. So we'll exit out of the preferences and out of GIMP entirely. Next I'm going to right click on here and go to delete. So that will delete that main 2.10 folder. Now we're going to navigate back to the folder where we have our Photo GIMP Master. So that's going to be this folder here. So this is the folder when we extracted our file from the zip file and then we entered all those folders. Here is the final 2.10 folder we need. So I'll Control C to copy that. We can minimize this. And coming back here, we're going to right click and go to Paste. So that has pasted the photo GIMP files now into GIMP and our desktop icon didn't update here. Let me right click, go to refresh. So that part didn't work. This was made for Linux, so perhaps not everything is going to work for Windows. But now what I'll do is just double click to open GIMP. And here you'll see the new photo GIMP splash screen. And once GIMP has finished loading, you should now see the brand new layout. So this is the photo GIMP layout. So I'll point out some of the new features. For one, they got rid of the little Wilbur icon that's usually up top here. All the icons are automatically converted to symbolic icons, so they are that single color. The tools are automatically in a single row and grouped, which is only available in GIMP 2.10.20 or newer. And then they've cleaned up the default workspace here, so you only have your tool options, fonts, layers, and channels. And that frees up room in the canvas, so I'll go to File, New and click OK just with the default settings so you can see our canvas has a bit more room. And the main thing I want to point out here is that your shortcut keys have been automatically replaced with Photoshop shortcut keys. So I'll come over here and click and hold this and you'll see the move tool now instead of having the M shortcut key has the V shortcut key. Another example is the paintbrush tool. So instead of that being P now that's going to be B and you can see all the other shortcut keys there. Let's go to the crop tool, that's another common one. So that's just C now instead of Shift C. And if I come over to the fonts, you'll see there are a bunch of new fonts in here. Again, check the individual licenses on each one of these fonts because some of them cannot be used commercially. And if I click on my paintbrush tool and come back to the tool options and click on the brushes, you'll see there's also some new brushes in here. So you guys can feel free to browse through those. So before I finish off this tutorial by showing you how to restore GIMP back to its original state before Photo GIMP, I do want to mention I will not be using the shortcut keys from here. I will not be using Photo GIMP. I just want to show you guys how to install it in case you are a Photoshop user. So if you are a longtime viewer of my channel, a subscriber, and you're wondering if I'm going to be using this setup moving forward for the rest of my tutorials, I will not. I will continue using the setup I usually use. Some of you might prefer this setup, but I will show you guys how to restore GIMP back to what it was before Photo GIMP. So let's exit out of GIMP here. And now let's open up our GIMP backup folder. And then we'll also open up the main folder here that GIMP is working with. So here is that 2.10 from the Photo GIMP master file. So all we have to do to back this up is right click, go to delete, navigate over here to the backup folder, right click, copy, right click, paste, and now GIMP should be backed up to the default and we'll know based on the splash screen. And there GIMP is going to be returned back to normal. And indeed we are back to my setup here.
All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you can check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.